You ready, Ten? All right. Fucking dog. Yeah, I know. Oh, he's a sweetheart. Kind of. I eat him. Kind of. He's, he's very uh, aggressive for such a small pooch. Very, like, yeah, they... we went camping over the weekend. Man, Ooh. and we brought the dog. We tried. We went to Guacchi Beach, right? Guacchi, Close yeah, by. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Cause huh? It's kind of like a trial run. We're going to try to go every weekend on a different part of the island. Nice. And, you know, maybe document it, maybe take some photos, you know, make some memories, that kind of thing, drink some beers. Uh, and we brought our dog with us, and Aurora's there, and it's not worth it. It's very, very difficult to put together a... Not just a tent. It's like a tent and a dining shelter and get everything going. And she's got to get a nap. And there's other dogs. And so Tan's going crazy. And it's a lot of work. But ultimately, um, yeah. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> and we're going to do it again next weekend. So oh, geez. <laughs> every weekend, hopefully it gets better. How are you doing, buddy? Very good. Very good. Um, just I went to – I went yesterday down to – a town called Lakeville, drove down there. It's about 18, 20 miles south of me, I think, maybe a little less. Pedaled around for two hours from like, uh, it was like, it was, it was in Fahrenheit, it was 80, 85 degrees when I, when I left. And by the time I got back, it was probably 75. Like it was getting, it was getting, the, the sun was setting and everything. Mm. It's just fabulous. It's just fabulous. Like there's that warm, that warm lake smell uh -huh. coming off freshwater ponds. Like there's something, there's something else. It's not just the water that you're smelling. There's some kind of, uh, maybe some kind of algaic process. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Like, you know, or maybe it's just the smell of warm water. I'm not sure. Cause I, the water was very warm. Did you go uh, for a dip? No, I, no one else was. So I was like, hmm, maybe, <laughs> The, the good boy in me was thinking that I'm going to be splashing around in people's drinking water. So <laughs> I didn't quite do it that I think I will, though, because there was no there were no signs. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll do it again, maybe uh -huh. splash around and maybe get a fish hook in the face because there were a lot of people fishing. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, it's probably why they weren't fishing. No one swims up by courtesy to the fishing people. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's splashing mm -hmm. around. The fishermen are going to be there like, fuck hey, this hipster. Motherfucking hipster. Get on your bicycle, you fucking cocksucker. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, that's homophobic. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I'm even angrier. You're homophobic. Wait. Yeah, I can see what? him yelling that stuff at you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I pedaled. You know, it was, it was good. It was a good time. We were in a heat wave, sort of, you know, um, a top 90 degrees Fahrenheit today. It was Out there in Massachusetts. Yes. Just to give context. And the best part is, um, thank you. The best part is that it's just officially summer now. And it's already this warm. We're already getting these characteristic seasonal thunderstorms that come through when it's super hot and it mm. kind of dries things out and cools things out and then it gets hot again. Mm. It's like, yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. For, for those who are wondering, uh, Brett and I are both in favor of global warming. We're huge fans. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if we have any choice. I mean, is there anything? Is there anything actually being done at, a, at an institutional level mm. across countries to try to lessen the uh, impact of, of of global emissions and global industry? It's and really climate? interesting. I did a story about two weeks ago, and I've written about it before, and it doesn't get a lot of airplay because it sounds pretty boring. But there's a thing called the Arctic Council which consists of Canada and a bunch of other Arctic nations. Also China. China really wants to be a part of it for reasons that, you know, it's wanting to become like hegemonic power of the world. And uh, the United States just opened up a new consulate in Greenland. First time in like 50, nearly 70 years, 71 years, something like that. And it's all because of global warming is causing the ice shelf to melt and creating avenues for... Uh, shipping and mineral extraction and oil and so all these com countries that are like we need to stop global warming but also if it's happening we might as well try to figure out ways to uh benefit sure yeah you know? sure sure so, 
let's play a quick game before we get going. I thought this wouldn't be fun. It's called. It's not a new game I invented. It's a word association. I'm going to give you some words, some names, some places, some things. You tell me what comes to mind. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. So instantaneously, <laughs> no time to think. Uh, well, you can take a moment. It's, it's, you know, let's try to do this relatively right. quickly, but I thought this might be okay. fun. So first one that comes to mind, you can talk about like, you know, your association with this person or object or thing uh, or a memory you have of it. First one is Oprah Winfrey. Overrated. Why? I just don't, um, <sighs> shit. No, no, let me do that again, because she's not overrated. She mm. worked very hard to get where she's at. Mm. Narcissistic. Okay. Why, because she's got a magazine with her name on it? Well, I, I, I don't, I imagine that to get, to be as powerful as she is, mm -hmm. being an overweight black woman, in the 80s, getting it done. You have to be getting, the very fight itself has to be, has to be doing something for you. The very, the very struggle to get your face out there and get your name out there mm -hmm. has to have its own, its own value, aside from the money and aside, like she has to be wanting that attention. Mm -hmm. The fight is part as she did. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, ultimately, it just it just got to be too much for me. I don't, I don't, Oprah. Okay, <laughs> just next mm. one, Tulsa. Oh, jeez, uh, Tulsa. I don't know anything about Tulsa. Um, <laughs> uh, that's fine too. That's where Trump recently held his rally on oh, Friday. He did. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Tulsa? What do you Tulsa, think of Tulsa? Tulsa is the Tulsa massacre. Where... Tulsa is the recent issue with Trump and the um, he was holding he was supposed to hold this rally in Tulsa, India, uh, India, yes, on mm -hmm. uh, Juneteenth mm -hmm. uh, in Tulsa, right? And people yeah. got really upset about it because it's Juneteenth. He's a racist, and it's also the site of the uh, of the the Tulsa massacre, which is when they, there was like the black wall street in Tulsa, uh, during, I, I don't have the dates on top of my head, but it, the, they pretty much killed hundreds of black people that lived in this town because they were prosperous and they took oh. it over. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. Tulsa. And, uh, I had uh, PS five down. Are you going to get it? Are you interested in that at all? The new systems that come yes. up PS five oh. and the new Xbox. Because I know I you're a like, big gamer. I'm not a big gamer. I'm very casual. Like I only ha I only play a few games, maybe a few, you know. But but that's cool. I mean, I I didn't think they were. I, I don't know why consoles exist anymore. I thought they <laughs> want to do most of their gaming online, mm -hmm. so they can. The, apparently, it's much more profitable for these uh, these giant hardware, uh, the, these video game companies or whatever that actually make the hardware mm -hmm. much more profitable for them to move gaming online and have people, I don't know, with these with these transactions that they have. Well, also, I really don't know anything about this. I don't know charging the same know. prices for games without the actual cartridge. I have a Nintendo Switch. Most right. of the cost of a well, a lot of the cost of the game goes into the damn. USB thing, right. the SD right. card, right? That's expensive, <laughs> but it's the same price right. online. That's where they, why they make up so much, why it's so profitable for them online. But the problem sure. with it being online is not everybody has the same access to the internet and so forth. That's probably yeah, one of the reasons. And apparently some gamers around the world are inconvenienced not only by slow gaming speed, but by the fact that the servers are so bloody far away. That too, yeah. You know, so if, so if a Russian wants to play call of duty with uh you know with uh with the german mm. the german's not going to have as much lag and the russian yeah because apparently there's no yeah the closest server is sweden yeah. mm. I, I i watch a lot of video game youtubes for whatever <laughs> reason i do they are guilty play. they're so silly <laughs> they're so bloody silly it makes me happy that there's these silly young people who are making good money. Yeah. 
by by like like a diff it's a different medium for comedy mm. you know playing video games is a different is just another way to entertain people and some of these edits are fucking beautiful like these guys are really good at editing mm. and girls um guys and gals are very very good at editing it's just, it's, it's, uh, you, they can't they can't have put those videos together in in a day it's got to mm. be several days of like eight hour putting eight hour days mm. in some of the bigger youtubers actually have editors that they hire to do that for them imagine oh, I, that i can't imagine I can't. what like kind of person supplier and pewdiepie and people that big mm. yeah you, you must have a huge a charismatic personality to be able to play video games for like eight hours straight just streaming i can't do that i can't watch people play video games like that but i watch people talk about video games i watch about people playing video games when it's all cut up nicely and um and the last name on our list haruki murakami oh there's the overrated well no i shouldn't say overrated again it's it's too unkind perplexed like i don't i don't understand why like why this like why this Japanese author? Why is he translated so mm. often in English? I don't understand. I really don't get it. And we'll get into more of that in a little bit on Boozing Through Lit. Brett, could you do me the favor of striking a pose? Make a point. Make a point. <laughs> Signing off this week on Boozing Through Lit. Fuck a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. All right. First segment on boozing. So, Father's Day. That was yesterday. Yes. Did you know, sir? No, wait. Father McNally invented Father's Day in 1986. He was an Irishman that lived in an orphanage. And the whole purpose of making this Father's Day was that so many women were dropping off their babies at the orphanage because the fathers had either died or disappeared or whatnot. And he decided to create a day to honor fathers that stay by their children, to promote fatherhood. Mm. When he himself could not be a father, that's very interesting. Well, he's a father in a metaphoric okay. sense. Okay, before you go on, that, I, I didn't know how to, how to start that. I just made the whole fucking story up. I have no idea where the father's name comes from. Oh, <laughs> Father McNally doesn't exist, no, you <laughs> bastard. I just Wait, is that, that appropriation? Jesus, I'm so nervous. Like, this is just as... I watched really quickly, you know, Rogan... Somebody dug up a video from 2011 where Rogan was laughing at an admittedly pretty, you know, disturbing thing that Joey Diaz used to do to use his leverage as a bouncer, I believe, to to get sexual favors from women trying to get in the club or something like that. And mm -hmm. it's it's you know, it's it's but it's sick. It's it's weird. It's mm -hmm. Joey Diaz. Uh, you know, I love Joey Diaz, but some of the stories he does and he knows. Some of the stories he tells are just fucking. You, you get thrown in jail today if you right. didn't, you know, back back in the eighties and nineties. But I'm just like they're going after Rogan now, or they're you know, and this seems to be a pretty. This seems to it might stick, and I'm just like I don't want to say like when you you terrified me when you said Oprah because I don't necessarily like what she does, but mm -hmm. I have to pretend. So now it's oh, like now I'm just all like, ah! right. right. I don't want to give my opinion. I don't, and I don't want. I don't want. To feel that way, I, my opinion is all that I have. You know? Right, it's all that I have, and I, I have to make sure I don't censor myself too much. Mm -hmm. um, That's but, really mm -hmm. interesting, actually. You know, because he's a divisive character, right? Like Joe Rogan. Sure. Some people like him, mm -hmm. some people don't. You, you know, I go back and forth, and I've kind of gotten to the point where I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like I don't listen to him or anything anymore. Um, but. And, and he admits that he's been on a journey this whole time. He's evolved right. as a person. He might not it's act Joe the same Rogan way. Experience. Right. It's, it's it's like we're we're following him mm. as he goes on this journey mm. and on, should, on the podcast. Should people be pilloried for things that, laughing, or you know, or for things that they've said before? There was a some woman on a show, a producer on a show, made tweets that were really inappropriate a long time ago, right? Should they be and and they surfaced recently, and she she probably doesn't she probably realizes that that was wrong, you know, and but should we be you know, well we're just this is the thing this. 
we're in a we're in a I'm not I'm not an evolutionary biologist by any stretch of the imagination. I think no one is surprised to hear me say that. <laughs> given some of the boneheaded things. Really, Brett? I thought you were. <laughs> but I'm this sounds a lot like just resource competition. It sounds a lot like like if you if you disagree with someone or you think someone is morally reprehensible, you want them you want them silenced. You want them shut up because mm. talking is so valuable nowadays. Talking, I mean, if you if you have a podcast or if you have a the, more people than ever can get their make their voices heard. So there's mm. too many voices out there, mm. and and the value of a particular voice lowers in relation to the sheer number of voices that are that are that are broadcasting so you know, opinions therefore are are, are 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 if you will being crowded there is a giant crowd of opinions mm -hmm. and in order to have your opinion matter one strategy is to shut other people up so that your voice can be heard more right it's it's and I, that's so fucking dangerous and of course I'm, I'm just I'm repeating what so many other people have said lately about about attacks on free speech mm. but it's true like there's something when we can't talk when we and to who the fuck is perfect to, because Joe laughed at a humorously delivered anecdote by one of his friends the content of which is morally reprehensible because he laughed at it does that mean he's a rapist? That's... Does that mean he can't talk about anything? What about the parallels? And you know that's where it's going. Yeah. It's like take Rogan off YouTube, you know, like take before he goes to Spotify, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's I know that's where it's headed. I know that's where it's headed. It's like let's cancel Joe Rogan. Cancel anybody who 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 has done something stupid or, or done something callous or done something incautious. Well, do receipts matter? Fucking high yeah. Do receipts matter? We talked about this in our first podcast back. If you have evolved and prove that you have evolved, does that matter? Does that excuse or allow, like, not, uh, yeah, I guess excuse is the best word I can think of at the moment. Former, like, previous transgressions. Mm -hmm. Does it? Oh, I don't well, know. I mean, does I don't it know it's not even up to that. us. It's up to the collective not, internet world. Not, uh, it's up to it's up to people who still still you know it's up to us who who listen and who consume mm -hmm. podcasts and who consume these interview shows and so forth it's up to us to to decide of course but my goodness it's it's i don't i don't know i don't know where this is going and if i and it's getting in my head like i don't want to i don't want to censor myself and you know, I don't I don't think anyone who knows me would say Brett is all about putting people down. Brett is all mm. about, you know, uh, keeping women in the kitchen. Brett is all about hating on black people and brown people. Brett is all about, you know, showing the supremacy of males and white men in particular. That is not me at all. But if I say that like, I don't understand why, who you know, Murakami is so popular, the and if I use an Irish accent like I did, Father McNally, you know, is it is it is it appropriation? Is it putting mm. somebody down because because he's Japanese or something? Mm. And it, it's like, no, in my heart, I know, no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oof, this fucking clown who wears sunglasses indoors is uh, is hating on right. Japanese. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's just a fucking. I don't understand <laughs> why Murakami's so fucking popular. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Yeah, me neither. You know, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's like, and again, it's, it's all this, it's all the shrinking, it's, it's, it's the drying up watering hole thing. Mm -hmm. Or no, I shouldn't say that. It's the crowded restaurant. The restaurant's acoustics are terrible. There's too many people in the restaurant. No one can, the, the servers can't hear anybody. The bartenders mm -hmm. can't hear anybody. Nobody can, can, can have a conversation because it's so loud. Mm -hmm. So the solution is, Rather than you know trying to 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 everyone just respecting each other, being in this restaurant, everybody collectively lowering mm -hmm. their voices in a metaphoric sense, it's kick that table out because mm -hmm. because uh, why? Well, more of us think this, so therefore you know 
And it's not it's not moral righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's not fucking moral righteousness that that this this person who dug up that clip of Rogan is also a, is also a sinner. Is also somebody who's fucked up. And that's fine. It's fine that that person mm -hmm. fucked up. It, and I wonder how many people who go through other people's lives with a fine tooth comb. I wonder how they would stand under such treatment. You well, know? that that clip that is is money, right? Like that sure. clip he found. It's journalists. Some journalists do this when when a new politician gets announced. You go through their tweets. You go back. You go check them out. Make sure what they said. Make sure what they didn't say. Blah blah blah. You know that this is what people do. And this probably is not a journalist. Somebody who did this. Um, maybe someone with a vendetta against against him, like you were saying. There's a parallel to that and what happened with Tulsa in that um, apparently a lot of uh, Trump protesters uh, overbooked the stadium or like said they were going to go. So there was like a million people going to go. 6,800 people showed up. And you got AOC, who I generally like, applauding right. those people for doing that. And, like online, like it could have been anywhere. Right. And it bothers me a bit that that gets applauded because it's disingenuous. How are we supposed to have a conversation? How are we supposed to know anything? How popular something is? How unpopular something is? How are we supposed to have a political discourse? If you have K-pop fans that are inundating these groups, uh, like the Trump protest, the Trump campaign with fake attendance numbers to make them look bad later on. And it's not just that, it's just, it's just in general. And I see there's a, like a connection to this, right? It's, it's the loudest voices at, who are the most passionate leaving and it cuts out the nuances, you know, the, like you were saying, you, you don't know what's in my heart, mm. you know, you're taking a clip and it's being taken out of context. And I'm not, I haven't heard this clip by Joe Rogan. I'm not like supporting it or anything like that. I'm just saying this is what happens and there's no like how are we supposed to have a political discourse when we end up just yelling about the tactics right mm -hmm. you know all oh, the left protesters did this or the right protesters do this well what are they actually angry about in the first place right right and that's you know, it's it's there there has to be a way where where People just aren't so dogmatic, mm. you know. It's just we can't be. We're, no one, no one is perfect. Mm. And this is this is. I, I almost feel like I'm spinning a, a a a fairy tale by by saying this. I almost feel I'm being terribly naive. But there there is a oh, what's his name? Daryl. Oh, God Good. damn it! What's I'm drawing a blank now because I'm nervous. Hmm. But uh, I'm sorry, he was on NPR years ago. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I got to work through it. Uh, he was on NPR years ago. He is a black musician who has converted, or has has gotten more clans people to leave the clan. Okay, than yeah. Anybody else. Yeah. He's uh, Daryl. I, I wish I remembered his last name because obviously that's the more salient part mm. of in trying to identify him. He was on Rogan too recently. Mm. We did an and, article about him about a year ago. And what his strategy was is tr trying to humanize people who hate him. Trying to humanize, trying to trying to not just humanize them to himself to make himself better at what he does, mm. but to humanize himself to them so that they can see that all the bullshit they heard about black folk is not true. It's not true, you know, and the it's empathy, it's conversation, it's, it's, hey, this is my family. Oh, that's your family. Hey, this is what I do for a living. Mm. That's what you do for a living. What you do for a living is quite hard. Um, what I do for a living is quite, you know, mm. it's, it's establishing human, common ground at a human level. That's how he was, that's how he got a grand motherfucking wizard to give him his robes and his hood and whatever and say, I'm done. I've been living a lie. Or... What was it? I, I don't feel this way anymore, mm -hmm. right? I don't. I don't hate black people anymore. Holy shit! 
He didn't do it by saying, you fucking white racist, cancel you. I fucking, I want to get you fired. I want to make it harder for you to live. Why? You know, it's, it's like, it's like tone in an argument. The moment you raise your voice, mm -hmm. the moment that you, well, I raise my voice all the time, but when I'm having a meaningful discussion with somebody else and <laughs> trying to change their mind, I usually don't I try to be measured. Um, but right now I'm just I'm talking to you and, and to the listeners, so I'm getting a little heated, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, you know, having tone matters. It matters so much. You could, you could be, you could be saying that, that. Darwin and Wallace, mm -hmm. no, discovered a process that explains speciation and biological diversity, and it explains so much about the natural, about about life on this planet. You could have, you could be trying to explain it to people. And if you say to them, you're an idiot if you don't believe this, mm -hmm. they're going right to right well, turn right the fuck off. What's the difference between you a know, debate and an argument? Well, no. An argument, a debate uh, has rules, right? Yeah, a debate right, has right. these rules. Otherwise, like in a debate, uh, you don't talk to the other team. You talk to the audience. Because if you talk to the, if you address the other team directly, then it becomes an argument and you're just yelling at each other. Well, an argument, though, an argument in its broadest sense, in its most ecumenical sense, is is, is what we're talking about. There's yeah. ways to argue. Mm -hmm. And then th that's why there's all sorts of argumentative fallacies that have been developed for several thousand years mm -hmm. that where, you know, like you, you, there's all these Latin terms. The only one I can bring to mind right now is ad hominem. Right. That's, when you attack one, the that's person. an argument. You attack a person, you're no longer arguing. You disqualify mm -hmm. yourself. You know, so there's all these different tactics you know, non sequitur. That's another one. That was mm -hmm. another term that was developed to catch people who were not arguing properly, who were not debating mm -hmm. properly. So let's con we're just conflate it. But an argument can also be "fuck you, you motherfucker," and and that's obviously not a debate. It's not mm -hmm. productive. But we have to learn how to argue, or to use your better, you know, your better term to debate. We have to learn how to debate as a people. We have mm -hmm. to learn how to debate, even if you're right. Even if even if you're right, we have to learn how to debate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the idea is that is that, you know, the law, it's it's the long game versus the short game. Mm -hmm. Short game is shut them up. Shut them up. I don't like because, you know, shut Joe Rogan up because he's got a giant audience and he influences too many people. Mm -hmm. The long game is the education of everybody involved. Everybody, everybody who has an opinion, which is so hard to do. Right. But it was. um. It was it was Socrates's fear of Alcibiades apparently if 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 what Plato wrote about Socrates is true of the man, mm -hmm. but you know Socrates was 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 famously or infamously opposed to democracy, and and he was especially fearful of people like Alcibiades who could who could uh, who could Alcibiades I don't know how you say his name mm -hmm. could with 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 forceful oration and powerful words get the mob behind him mm. you have to have an electorate that is educated and that is yeah. that is able to so if joe rogan let's say joe rogan says 10 things he's talking to a billion people let's say he says 10 things if two of them are utter fugazi you know if one is insensitive to gay people and the other one is insensitive to to the the plight of women at nightclubs right then you can say all right i'm not listening to that but if he asks broad questions about about if he asks a very interesting has a very interesting debate on the merits of hunting, or or the dangers that befall that are that are threatening that which is threatening free speech, mm -hmm. or if he if he if he if he teaches young stand ups how to make it in the stand up industry, stand up comedy industry, that's worth listening to. Mm -hmm. But you have to, you have to be able to you have to have an internal arbiter. You have to arbitrate and select your own thing. And what we're doing when we try to cancel people, we try to get them out of positions of, of – um, we try to kick them off their own platforms. Mm -hmm. We're basically saying – well, outwardly we're saying you know, we don't trust the listeners to make their own determinations about what to take to heart and what not to take to heart. But again, 
Alex even Jones. Sneakier, Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Shit, you know. It's he, tough. he, he that's very tough. Alex Jones might be just the opposite. He might say two things worth hearing and eight mm. things that aren't. Um, Which are but, dangerous. Getting people to go on to like pizza fo- parlors with guns. I know. I know. It's 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 tough. It's very hard. And that's you know and they both can use the same. something more insidious going on. It's let's get Joe Rogan off the air mm. so that those listeners will be free to be caught and, and brought to something else. You know, so mm. that the for instance to use my perhaps sloppy metaphor from earlier, let's take this giant table of people in the restaurant, kick them out mm. so that we can we can we can all hear each other better, rather than everyone lowering their voices in the restaurant so that everyone can be heard and, and you know mm. so that the thing can go on as normal well one of my pet peeves I is i think that's the long way that that's the mm. long way that takes generations because if one thing is is wrong with america it's that education is not important education is not as important as making money right that's, yeah that's te- that's that's criminal mm. that's pra- that, not not all right i'm using another imprecise word that's reprehensible okay Education is number one. I think the first education. thing that we need to invest in is media education. No one understands how this works. Not a single yeah. person. Well, obviously not. I'm being hyperbolic here. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But like the, lab, the lack of media education is so small. Right. That works, right? Level is so low that. <laughs> You're like fucking Stannis moron. At the end of, uh, in, uh, in, in. Uh, less, not fewer. Sorry. <laughs> I do that. Game of Thrones. I'm such a dick. I do that. I I'm, I have to like literally go. No, Daryl, don't don't correct that every single time. Don't no. They're fine saying less, but I judge them. I judge them very harshly. <laughs> when I see people at media say like, "There's less men on the bench today," and they'll, you know, because they're dealing with the flu, and I'm just like, "You're on TV, really." Anyway, Father's Day. What are... Well, I don't even know if we have time to talk about Father's Day now. We got to get the Murakami. You're, yeah. What, what time is it? We got. How much a, time we, do you have? We have half an hour. Oh no, less oh, than geez, twenty you got, minutes. Like, you got twenty-three minutes. Yeah, we got to. Boom, gotta, boom, boom, boom. Sorry, boom. folks. Happy Father's Day. Uh, I hope you have a good relationship, dear listeners, with your fathers. Yeah. Um, I, I hope so. And if not, I hope that you can, mm-hmm. you can, uh, you can figure out how to forgive him, and so you don't hate him. Learn how to pity and instead of hate. Uh, hatred is very tiresome. It's mm-hmm. exhausting. Um, and don't it, forget... I it is, mm-hmm. yeah. No, please. You were going to say something oh, insightful. Daryl's a dad. Let's not forget. Daryl's a dad. Woo! I am. <laughs> I'd, it'd be weird if I forgot that. And possibly illegal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and don't forget. Thank Father McNally for this wonderful day. Now, on to... Murakami. So I got my little spiel right here. I'll start off. Right. Let me grab the Let's books. Where are they? Boom. So my wife introduced me to Murakami during the greener days of our relationship in the gift of Norwegian wood. This bad boy right here. Uh, which I did like. I enjoyed the relationship and the romantic entanglements and that it was one. It was from one of my future favorite, wa- f- favorite wives? Future wives' favorite books. <laughs> Then I gifted her Sputnik Sweetheart, which she didn't read, but I did, and generally liked the short novel that was written from the perspective of a male narrator, but centers on the young aspiring female writer falls in love with a much older Korean woman, if my memory is correct. It's, it's kind of nice. Like, it's a little bit sweet, and I like the narrative style. Then we bought a whole whack of his works, including this tome, nine, IQ84. And Isn't Caf- it one Q eighty four? Isn't yeah. it one Q eighty four? That wasn't that one Q eighty four. I haven't read it. Yeah. I haven't read it. It's several books. It's a brick. It's a tome. Listen to it. We know. We know God doesn't exist. Because God would never allow that book to be larger than His own. I mean, that's <laughs> if, the, if we're talking about the Old Testament God, Murakami would have been swallowed by a crack in the earth by now for making a book that big. We we also him bought, and him and Tolstoy. Yeah, Kafka mm-hmm. by the shore, which I. We read and we talked about. I haven't read this book, The Brick. There's Kafka all over his stuff, all over yeah. his stories, by the way. Kafka. And I sure. didn't read that because I read Kafka by the shore first and wasn't as infatuated as many others by the living, breathing, murdering Johnny Walker label come to life or the spirit guide of Colonel Sanders. 
and flirts with the yeah. notion of incest between brother and sister and son and mother. And now we have confessions of the Shinawaga monkey, or as his narrator oh. might call it, another meaningless statement. And Murakami might say it as well. He seems to, I, you know, I feel bad digging into him because he seems like a nice guy. And I'm sure he is. From I'm the, sure he is. Yeah, and from the little interviews I've read by him, he writes about, like, you know, like, he, he just writes about stuff he's interested in. And if he writes about classical music one more goddamn time, I swear to God, I'm going to kill him. Uh, well, it's better than it's better than what Nabokov always used to write about, I, I think. You know, what? Just young girls. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't just Lolita where he talked yeah. about it either. No. Um, it's, better, it's better to have as your obsession classical music. I suppose. Than, Mur- than, or, yeah. Murakami seems to, write, seems to see writing as a toy. Which is fine, I guess. And that must add like it's a whimsical character to his work. But when you see there's no meaning to the monkey in the story we just read. Um, Bothers me. How can... And I can't get mad at him. I don't blame Mirakami. I kind of blame those who read him, who celebrate him and publish him. The story is a man stays at a dilapidated inn in Gunma Prefecture, where he meets a talking monkey who tells the man over beers in his room that he desires women and satiates his desires by stealing a part Human of the women. Human, Human women. Human women. Yeah. Years later, the writer uh, speaks, because he's a writer, with a fetching woman who momentarily forgets her name, admits it, compelling him to write the story down and for us to read it, I guess. On this episode of Boozing Through the New Yorker, whenever I listen to a Bruckner symphony, I ponder the Shinawaga monkey's personal life. Fuck, man! I think I, t- I think I talked over you when you explained what the monkey does to satisfy a sexual fixation. I think I, I, think oh, I talked over you when you said that. He steals a part of their name. He concentrates on a part of their name. He's got to steal a piece of ID, meditate on it, and then the women become disorientated and whatnot. Um, what did you anything? What did you like about this? And they forget their. They they both forget their names mm. sometimes, and and. He, the monkey, somehow is sated by somehow. this. Somehow. And somehow he does it. Mm-hmm. Somehow the monkey does it. To mm-hmm. be, like, somehow. And the narrator even speculates that the Shinagawa monkey might not be the only creature that can do this. Mm-hmm. And he wonders if he can do it as well. I mean, it's, it's just, I remember there was a line in Audition, which is... Uh, one of my favorite directors, Miike Takashi, mm. um, one of his, one of his, one of it, perhaps his magnum opus, but certainly the one that's most well known to Western audiences. There's a scene where the 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 ostensible protagonist and his buddy, who's in media, you know, the the, the protagonist is like, I'm very lonely, mm. right? You know, I need I need to find a woman. I'm very lonely, and his friend scoffs like. <laughs> You're Japanese. We're just we're just lonely. Uh-huh. So ultimately, this this thing, if it's about anything at all, it is about loneliness and the bizarre lengths that people will go to both describe their loneliness and try to try to slake it, try mm-hmm. to remedy it. But I, I thought for a moment, I'm like, oh, the monkey is an invisible non-Japanese worker. In Japan, <laughs> like an Indonesian uh-huh. worker, or a, or a Mozambican worker, uh-huh. or you know somebody somebody non-Japanese who right. can speak perfect Japanese and is is courteous mm-hmm. and and can give a good back rub, can do all the things that are required of him in his in his station there. Mm-hmm. But he, you know, it's a metaphor. It's yeah. a metaphor for a foreign worker in Japan. But then it, they got with that weird, and that, my theory got thrown overboard when he's talking about how he he thirsts after human women. Okay, good. He, he likes Japanese women. He's an Indonesian who likes Japanese. Okay, we still. So I I, I steal their names. Mm. Oh, I don't get it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I don't understand the story now. I don't get it. That's that's the, you know. Yeah. Who would who would attribute those powers to anybody? You know. So so it's like I don't. And again. Just because I don't understand what a story, mm-hmm. but it would be so much more. So when he's when the narrator is in the actual spa, mm-hmm. 
rubbing him like like cooking in the mm. uh, in the in the hot bath, and the monkey comes in. The act an actual monkey with a red face mm. comes in and starts saying, "Is everything okay?" Mm. Like in perfect human language, you know. It says human language, is, which is weird, and doesn't say Japanese. Ja- I thought that was Japanese, kind of weird. But- no, it doesn't. It just says human language. It's weird. But like, right. and he says, the monkey says he doesn't do this to anybody. So my question is, why does he pick this guy to come out to and just talk to naturally? Like, yeah, without this... clothes. And Is then it... later on, he's wearing clothes. Like, I guess, I guess it's because they're all naked. Yeah, they're all naked. Dur, I forget. I haven't been to a into a yeah, sauna in so naked. long. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Um, I was naked, but you know, this idea that I think it would be way stranger if an actual Indonesian person opened the door. Mm. I think that the main character would have a harder time talking to the Indonesian than he would to a monkey. Mm. Like it's somehow even stranger to imagine an Indonesian sliding because, because it's just foreigners in those kinds of jobs, whether it's agriculture mm. or, or factotum work, yeah, in, those in migrant Disney workers saunas and stuff. Yeah. They are so invisible. They are so, they are, it's like, how would they even learn Japanese? No one would even talk to them. Especially in Asia, right? There's thousands of migrant workers on Jeju, and you don't see them. You You don't don't see them. You don't see them at all. Remember one time I was driving my car with a a young lady I was dating named Songmi. You actually met her Mm -hmm. um, once or twice on, and and we were just driving around the island. I had a car. We were driving around. It was a hot day. And we, we were in a village, we were driving through a village on the northeastern side of the island, which is pretty remote, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty poor out there. Um, and we just, we got, I got a little lost because I was taking these lanes and the lane dead ended at a big tree. And underneath the tree was half a dozen Southeast Asian dudes. It could have been Khmer, they could have been Vietnamese, I'm mm. not sure. Just half a dozen of them just squatting under a tree mm. in the middle of nowhere on a Saturday. No, it was Saturday or Sunday. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. Here they are. This is, this is you know, it's mm-hmm. like, because you heard about that. You heard about, you know, that, that, that agriculture is actually done in large part by, by foreign workers. Mm-hmm. The world over. <laughs> the world over, of course. But mm-hmm. even, in, even in Korea, mm-hmm. that Koreans are so affluent, they won't do that work. And I'm like, fuck, they're, they're totally hidden. It would, be, it would be more remarkable if the story had an Indonesian guy slide the door open and say, hey, is everything all right, sir? Mm. Like in perfect, like pitch perfect Shinagawa mm. accent. But it's not about that. It's about something else. And I don't know what the fucking thing is about. Well, is it about loneliness? Is it about like a, a particularly Japanese form of of courtship? <laughs> Lack, like court, where you steal a woman's identification uh-huh. You memorize, like you said, memorize her name, and it kind of blinkers her a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like she's That's a good way to put it. Let, you know, and now, so now she's walking around sometimes in a fog when she's contemplating her own name, and you get to do what with that? You get to just sit there with a warm belly? Like, <laughs> How does it say she I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't get it. He holds it. He it's says, so... he's got seven names. Let's do them right. And uh, like they... they uh, Mirakami said in an interview about this story with the New Yorker, because each time they come up with a story in the New Yorker, they tend to do an interview with the writer. And he said that he goes into like university classrooms where they're talking about the meaning of his books. And he doesn't like, he's like, oh, I just wanted to write about a fucking talking monkey. And that's what I mean. Like, it's like a toy. Like, I used to write shit like this when I was in, when I started writing. Ooh, wouldn't it be interesting if there's a cafe that never closes, but there's no doors and people sit there eat endless peanut butter sandwiches? Ha oh, ha ha! Like, <laughs> what the? Like, you know, why? I why? Don't, well, it's 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 very it's again. He has every right to do it. Of it's course, fine. but he why? Had, are and we more reading? power. And he's, you know, I don't know why we're reading it. I really don't know why we're reading and, this. And then the people online. Uh, and it's in it's in it's in the mother. F- fucking new yorker and again this sounds like sour grapes i get it and i'm not hating on murakami mm. because i'm jealous maybe only a little bit but it's 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 not and i'm not hating on him uh-huh. I, I i what i've read of his i've enjoyed i just don't 
I don't understand what like it's absurdism at least with 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 Beckett mm-hmm. and Marquez you know Garcia Marquez and everything there was and 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 you know Fuentes there's 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 a there's a point mm-hmm. it's like an allegory the stories are allegorical yeah this one it's it's literally a talking monkey with psychosomatic powers or something and and it's somewhere in there, I think, is a discussion of Japanese manhood, but I don't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think I think in there you can pull out Japanese manhood. Like Japanese men sometimes are so career focused and strange mm. that they'll, you know, they'll. Well, I, my favorite detail in the story is when he's talking to the young. The narrator is talking to the young lady. Who had her idea? Who, who forgets her name mm. briefly? At and the end, like, she's oh, an editor of a magazine, I think. Yeah, is the monkey back at it? <laughs> and the great detail I remember is that her purse got stolen, mm-hmm. and then it got returned with everything in it but the ID card. Mm-hmm. And I'm just and there she. I just imagine her like, where'd my purse go? Where'd my purse go? Mm-hmm. Goes to the station. Here's your purse, but straight all your cash is in there, and like the cops kind of scratching his head <laughs> a little bit. It's like, I don't know, there's just no, your ID card's gone. Mm. He is the favorite writer of so many people I know. A lot Mm. of, and I'm not going to, like, you want to talk about censorship. I'm, I wonder if his popularity is this kind of like part of just fascination with Japan. Part of this, like, almost... I hate this term. I'm I'm too dumb to come up with another one. Reverse racism. Oh, whimsical qualities about this and that and personifications and blah blah blah. Oh, this is this is this is great. Like a reverse or- orientalism that allows stuff like this to just fly when it's not good. It's I, I, I'm it's, sorry, Murakami. It's, it's funny. It's it's just funny. It's actually a funny story. It's just this idea that there's this like imagine how when they're talking with each other, how we're a beer mm. and he's got like he's got sweatpants on and an I love New York t shirt. The monkey's yeah. got like I love New York t shirt. Mm. I just imagine like they're sitting like the monkey is sitting Indian style in such a way that the bottoms of both feet are touching. Right. And he occasionally scratching his top of his head with his giant, uh-huh. exaggerated fingers. You know, elongated, he's, yeah. Oh, yes. I, I, and I imagine he's speaking in a very bookish, mm. like he studied at a university. Because he was raised by a university professor. So I imagine mm. he's talking in these very measured, like, elitist university cadences. Like, yeah. yes, I like to, I like to, uh, as he pulls like a fucking, mm. as a, 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 like a piece of lice off his head or something. <laughs> Yes, I imagine that I'm I'm actually morally reprehensible in doing the things that I do, but I I can't I can't seem to stop doing it. And it's like fuck, this is a monkey. It's just hysterical. But I don't, I, you know, yeah. It's fun. Good for him. You know, God bless him for actually writing yeah. in a leg- an understandable manner. Like Gertrude Stein didn't even give us that toward mm-hmm. the end. Like she just wrote. <laughs> You know, this is translation, by the way. It's in translation. Of course. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, but um, thank God he's writing it, you know, left to right. <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> but, you know, punctuation marks, you know, which is more mm-hmm. sometimes than Cormac McCarthy gives us. Yeah. Sometimes, like, who the fuck is talking? Why yeah. isn't there a comma? No, right. no time for quotation marks. Must keep going. Yeah, that's that's. I love, that's how, I love how he just hates commas. Like, what a thing to hate. <laughs> Like you can hate so many things and you hate comments. Like oh fuck comments. Yeah. It's like Jesus Christ. Uh, am right. I off? Am I like being like idiotic to talk about the no. like the or like? I just don't see. It. I don't understand. I don't get it. I he seems like a like great guy. He seems like he would be fun. I couldn't even think the story was that funny because I don't care. <laughs> yeah, there really is no reason to care. There's no reason to care about the story. You know, it's just because you, you keep because you keep it's you kind of strung along a little bit. Like, is this going somewhere? Mm. I thought, like, is the monkey and the guy going to have sex? I'm like, is this where this is going? Is this 
you know, is 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 or is the guy gonna forget his fucking name? That would, like is the and again the narrator doesn't ever give us his name. Does if he? you're gonna be absurd, uh, absurd, just keep going with just it. Keep, keep just keep going, going right? Going like that's it. that's. The, the, I like this. The story Instead of the of feeling style. a monkey finger in his butthole, he can just forget <laughs> his name. Like just, oh shit! Oh no! The monkey. The or monkey's maybe big. maybe he falls fucking. in love with the monkey, and he oh, tries he to take a piece oh, no. of the monkey's name, but the monkey doesn't have any ID. So how is he supposed to take the part oh, of the name? I don't know. Quite monkey love. Oh man. I'm sure Murakami would get a kick out of that interpretation, by yeah. the way. I'm sure he would. Like, <laughs> he seems that's like, very funny. I'd like to talk yeah. to him. He seems like fun, and maybe I could like his work better. It reminds me of a, when we're in India. I'd love it if we interviewed him, and he goes, you, aren't you the two assholes who hate me? <laughs> like, <he was> like, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. When we're in Sorry. India for our honeymoon of sorts, and there's monkeys all over the place, like, and they're greedy as fuck. Like, they'll take the food right out of your hands and whatnot, and we're at a store. And on this door, there was a sign, a really crude painting of a monkey with a circle in it and a cross through it that said, no monkeys. And no, I looked at it and I, had the, I asked the, uh, the shopkeeper, I'm like, monkeys can read? Because like, and he's like, yes, monkeys read. Because why the fuck would oh, you have a sign that said no monkeys? Like a monkey goes, oh, Arisa, this, why is the monkey green? I get thing. Why? Okay. This, this shop I am banned from. I get it. <laughs> but I'm that's me I, I don't get it I don't know why it's in the New Yorker I like the style like the the narration reminds me of the shop by Pushkin it's the same sort of I kind of like this narration where it's about the main character that it's about is not the narrator and the narrator kind of like interacts with the main character and then there's a lapse of time and then it, you meet somebody else who knows the that character or had some interaction with them I do like that style yeah. It's very. This is like speaking of you know Pushkin and nineteenth century mm. Russian grace. This is very much Nikolai Gogol as well. Yeah, Gogol wrote a short story called The Nose, and there is there's a point in the story where a man loses his nose, mm. and the nose is actually walking around disguised as a nobleman. <laughs> this is written in the eighteen forties. I'm not. I'm not kidding. He was Look Gogol it up, was everybody. hilarious. Gogol, yeah, G O G O L. The nose, mm. you know. It's anyway, the nose is actually, he's got a little, <laughs> the nose has a mustache. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You, you must be mistaken. It says, <laughs> but yeah, Pushkin mm. too. I mean, it's just, it's just, obviously there's literary antecedents here, but mm -hmm. you know, I just, I, I don't, yeah. Maybe whatever. it's this thing, <laughs> this thing that is full of all of the, the meaning and what, I'm not going to read it. I spent like a lot. Of, I'm not gonna read it. Oh come on, we owe it to him now. We're, we're sending him up a little bit. Uh, not that he would ever give a fuck, but okay, I'll read this <laughs> by next week. This oh, will have been consumed, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That's been our boozing. Thank you for listening. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We're everywhere, baby. Until next time, keep scribbling. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was a good one